Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a simple and easy Hall Effect interface circuit using a Hall Effect sensor, which you can see on my breadboard. So this is a three-terminal TO92 package Hall Effect sensor, and they're very easy to get. Now I have made videos where I show how we could trigger one of these Hall Effect sensors by placing a south pole magnet near the face of the sensor, and we could trigger an LED or we could trigger any type of load. So in this video we're going to get into how we could make a simple interface to the sensor for your projects. Okay to get this Hall Effect sensor up and running we have to solder it to a proto board, put it in some kind of enclosure with terminals so we could hook up power. So instead of doing that we could go to the automotive world and pick up one of these. Now this is a crankshaft position sensor off a Jeep Cherokee years 1997 to 2001 it has a weatherproof connector with, with uh, three terminals for a hookup and then it has a cable going to the Hall Effect sensor which is encapsulated in this plastic so it's waterproof and we have handy uh, mounting tabs. Now this uh, part I picked up online for $7. Now you couldn't build this for $7. I've seen it in Walmart for $8 and you can get it on Alibaba or AliExpress. So we'll be using this in our uh, video for our Hall Effect sensor. Now this Hall Effect sensor, the three terminal, we have to apply a magnet to trigger it, but on the crankshaft position sensor all we need is a ferrous object because there is a magnet inside. You can see it's magnetic. There's a magnet already inside, so when I swipe by the sensor it'll trigger the output. So inside this enclosure there is a Hall Effect switch and then behind it is a weak magnet which is biasing the Hall Effect switch which will enable a ferrous object sweeping by to trigger uh, the Hall Effect switch. So I have a little video to demonstrate how this works. Now if we bring a ferrous target up to the Hall Effect sensor, we get no output. But if we take a North Pole magnet, magnet and then we feed it on the back side of the sensor until it just comes on, you can see it just comes on, now we're biasing, we're biasing the Hall Effect sensor. Now when we bring a ferrous object or a ferrous target up to the Hall Effect sensor, it will detect it. So as long as we have that bias present, we can actually make a sensor that will sense uh, ferrous targets. Okay, I have the sensor powered up with 5 volts. And on the signal output pin, I have a 1K pull-up resistor to 5 volts in series with an LED, as you can see in the breadboard. Now this is the simplest circuit. There's no microcontroller involved. So if I bring a ferrous object up to the sensor, you can see the LED comes on, and if I swipe it, you can see it pulses it. If you look at the scope, you can see that it's a very clean signal, there's no bounce. So this is a very simple circuit. All you need is an LED and a resistor. Okay, I have added a transistor to my circuit. It's a PNP transistor. So we could drive some heavier loads. And my load in this case will be my beeper, which you can see on my breadboard. So now when I bring a ferrous object up to the sensor, it will activate the beeper and light the LED. If I swipe it, it pulses. So now you could drive any type of load in your circuit. Okay, my last circuit, I have my sensor hooked up to my Nano, and I have a little program running, so when I swipe my sensor, it will toggle pin 13, which is the LED on board the Nano, and also the LED in the bottom left-hand corner. So I'll just, I'll just tap the sensor, and you can see it toggle, toggle off and on, and when I swipe it, She'll toggle off and on. That's just a little simple program running, a little toggle program to toggle the LED. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano, my little demo code to toggle my LED every time I swipe my sensor. It's written in fourth. I'm using Interactive Arduino, and my program is called Hall.toggle. So when I run that, the first thing it does, init it initializes pin 2 as an input with pull-ups. So we don't need external pull-ups. We'll use the internal pull-ups and pin 13 will be an output. So it goes into a begin until loop. This is continuously running. I was looking for pin 2 to go low. Now when I swipe the sensor, pin 2 goes low and if it sees that, it's going to toggle pin 13. Then it's going to wait for pin 2 to go high. Then it's going to go back up to the beginning waiting for pin 2 to go low again and it's going to do that in a loop. And I hit any key to get out of the loop and then she'll come out and stop. So that's my little demo code, very simple, to test my sensor. Okay, next we're going to have a look at the connector pinout. Now looking into the connector with a clip on the top, if we go to the very left, 
that's pin 3, and that's 5 volts. The middle one is pin 2, and that's ground. And the pin on the very right, it's pin 1. And that's the signal output. It's open collector. And that feeds our microcontroller, so we need a pull-up resistor, either external or internal, to the microcontroller. So that's simple. That's just the three connectors, and we could hook that up to our breadboard, and we could test out this sensor. Now, there's other sensors online for different vehicles. You could check them out, and, and you could get them uh, pretty inexpensive also. So check online for automotive sensors that you could use in your projects.